So, welcome to October. First thing on the agenda for this month is naturally finishing the hat that will be the Kofi giveaway. I'm very close to finishing. I've literally just got to stitch up the crown now and weave in the ends. So let's do that, get it blocking so that hopefully it will have dried by the time I have to post it out. <laughs> Let's get this in to start soaking. So in the meantime, I thought I'd take a look at what else I want to make this month, including some gifts I want to make, but also some more double knit weight projects. So the first one that's been in my list for a very long time, and I actually think a follower, if I'm right, gifted me this pattern. It was on my Ravelry wish, <laughs> that's hard to say. It was on my Ravelry wish list and somebody bought it for me. So if that was you, thank you very much. And this is the Echinacea hat by Carrie Westerman. And I think I've made one of her patterns before. Yeah, the shawl for an art lover I made before and I really liked it. And she's sort of got similar tastes to me, shall we say. I really like her a lot of her designs. And the reason I went for this one was because I had a skein of yarn from the Fiber Co called Law, and it's a very tweedy, I haven't got it here, I should have brought it down with me, oh well, a very tweedy brown, toothy sort of wool. And I originally used it to try and make a vintage style hat, but the gauge didn't work with the pattern. It was quite an early pattern, I think 1918. I bought it from Wearing History. And the, uh, the hat ended up looking like this. And I really wasn't very pleased with it. When I knew I was planning on using DK weight this month, I did a load of skeining up. And uh, that one of the things I did was frog that hat and steam the unpicked yarn. And I think what I want to make instead is this Echinacea hat. So it looks like it will use most of that skein. So we might get one and a half or something uh, balls of yarn out of the stash with this pattern because it's quite a slouchy hat. And um, if you've been following along with stash busting for a while, you know I struggle with hats. I don't think they suit me. A lot of you think they do. Um, but I think I've discovered that I prefer a slouchier hat rather than one that sits very close to the head. I think that's why I like berets as well. So I'm hoping that not only will this be a good stash busting project, but it will also be a style of hat that I'm more likely to wear because um, I ended up donating the brown one I made last year. I do wear the white one, the sort of merino one, but yeah, it's just it's just not me really. But it is quite good to have a white hat if you're walking about, or in my case, wheeling about uh, after dark in the winter. Four mil circular needles. Uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be a really fun little project. Some other things I want to make this month. Naturally, I'm going to be making daisies. I think I'm aiming to make four daisies a day and that will hopefully mean I get to my 60 daisies well, with, well before the end of October. But I also, uh, have some baby knits I want to try. So I found this Bear Hugs Baby Beanie by Kristen Holloway. It's a very cute crochet baby hat and I thought that would be a good use for some of the cotton left over from my blanket. I just decided I'm just going to leave the blanket as it is 
and I'm going to just use the yarn to make baby things because that's cotton's quite a good thing to do for that. So I want to do a little bit of crochet. What appealed to me about this crochet pattern, oh, it wasn't free. Oh no, it is, free. you can, there's an ad free version which you can pay for on Ravelry or you go to somebody's blog, which I must admit, I've looked at this and there were a lot of pop-ups. Um, so take your pick. But this design I liked because it doesn't look like crochet. It does look like crochet, but it's not just rows and rows of crochet. There's, there's lots of different textures. There's bubbles, there's basket weave. There's some sort of ribbing that I've never tried before. So I want to practice my crochet. That's a few new skills. And also I think it's going to look really cute. There is the option to add bear ears. I'm not sure I'm going to do that just because I don't think the, um, the baby or the parents that I have in mind for this hat are the sort that want bear ears. Um, but yes, that's going to be a crochet project I want to try this month. I've got a little bit of yarn left, so I think I'm going to make some hexi puffs just so that I can complete one of my flowers. Like I say, the daisies. I might do a little bit of work on the classic jersey as well, just to sort of keep it ticking along. I doubt I'm gonna finish that. And obviously that's not DK weight, but what else have I got in my queue? Oh yes, absolutely. The other thing I want to do is, uh, it's Strictly season. So I would like to do the Strictly Sock Along, which is hosted by Ali from Little Drops of Wonderful. And it's sort of a yearly thing, uh, knit along, where you knit socks whilst watching Strictly Come Dancing. And I, believe it or not, used to be a ballroom dancer <laughs> as a child, you know, for fun, not in a competitive way or anything. But I love Strictly. It's one of my favourite times of year. I'm talking about Strictly Come Dancing, which is known as Dancing with the Stars in other parts of the world. I look forward to it every year and I'm really struggling with just the cold, really. It's suddenly turned cold now in October. And Strictly is always one of the things that makes me feel sort of warm and cosy and look forward to this time of year. So I think I'm going to join the Strictly Sock Along. I have some DK weight, so I think I might make DK weight socks. I really enjoyed knitting those biscuit socks, which was another of my early stash busting projects. So I might do that pattern again, but the yarn I've got is variegated. It's uh, hand dyed, so it's very variegated. And I don't know whether the textured pattern of those biscuit socks would show up. So I think I'm just going to do plain socks. I found a pattern which is called something like vanilla socks. Let me see if I can find the pattern and tell you who it's by. DK Weight Vanilla Socks by Crazy Sock Lady Designs. It's the sort of socks I like, cuff down, heel flap and gusset, and it should use up 100 grams of that, so that would be two balls of wool down. I don't know if I'll get those finished by the end of October and everything else, that might be a stretch goal, but um, at least I can cast them on and knit them during the Strictly Sock Along. So Strictly runs until December, so we'll see and they could make a very nice present. But yeah, it's been a long time since I've done any socks. I think the last socks I made were those biscuit socks. So I think that will be a nice change for me as well, because particularly if it's a vanilla sock and it's just no pattern, that's pretty mindless knitting. So that will be quite nice when I'm bored of all my other things, the daisies, the intarsia, all that sort of thing, to just sit and knit satisfies, you know, a itchy fingers kind of need. How much longer have I got on my timer? 10 minutes, all right. I think I'm gonna start with the Echinacea hat because I have my heart set on that one. And of course, with it being a gift from a follower, I don't want to leave it too late <laughs> and forget about it. I realized in the last video, I never explained what I was doing here. Um, I think it was one of those I was like, oh, I'll put it in the voiceover and then didn't. Um, so you block a beret over a dinner plate to get that classic shape. And then that should be about right in terms of size. And then you also saw me hit it with a wooden spoon. And this is a technique for blocking fair aisle stranded colour work, I suppose you can also call it. Um, and I learnt this from Roxanne Richardson. So I'm not just a mad woman with a wooden spoon. <laughs> and then the other day, I had a brainwave. So this is one of these pizza pans with holes in the bottom. 
Oven's at 50 degrees C. Don't ask me what that is in Fahrenheit. Americans do what the rest of the world does when we have to deal with you and Google it. <laughs> Then we're taking three weeks to dry. <laughs> So my echinacea hat is blocked and drying in the oven. I really enjoyed making it. I made loads of mistakes though. I had to rip back so much on that project. It's kind of my own fault. It was just not concentrating. It's quite an involved cable. It wasn't even the cables really that got me. It was um, the pearl bumps, the diamonds. I would sort of forget where I was which repeat I was doing and things like that. So yeah, just lack of concentration really. But I am really pleased with it now it's finished and I've just blocked it and loads of dirt came out of it and I'm like the water was very very dark brown and not like dye dark brown like mud so <laughs> uh, I'm really glad I gave it a good wash but I thought I would show you what else I've been up to we've got about a week left in October so I might finish some other things but I thought this is a good place to sort of check in so I finished my little baby hat my crochet baby hat it's cute. This was supposed to be the 6 to 12 month size but it doesn't fit my nephew who's seven months old. I don't know whether it's just because it's cotton so it's not very stretchy or whether crochet is not very stretchy or my gauge was out because it was cotton. I don't know um, but this will have to go on a slightly smaller baby's head I think but I am really pleased with it. I do think it's beautiful the texture and this was a really great challenge for me to practice my crochet. Lots of things I'd never done before. Well, I thought I hadn't done them before. So this called for like front post and back post crochet, which I thought I'd never done before. But then when I searched it on YouTube, I'd watched several videos on it. So I don't know if I started a pattern, was like, nah, can't be bothered with that and abandoned it. But I've mastered it with this pattern. And I made these little bubbles, which I think are really sweet. And it's got a little bit of um, a sort of rib detail here, which I can't remember exactly how the pattern told you to do that. But um, I really like that effect because it looks like a knit beanie, which I know is not the point of crochet to look like knit. But um, as you know, I'm not the massive fan of the way crochet looks when the fabric of crochet looks. So I like that little extra detail. Uh, I used one and a bit of my leftover paint box cotton from the chevron blanket. So I'm not sure exactly how much I've got left, but I've got the scales here and we're going to total this up. And I like, this is how much um, of the Fiberco Law I have left from the Echinacea hat, which is more than I expected, um, but we'll see. I also this month um, made three hexi puffs from, you might remember from the August video, I think it is, I weighed up what I'd done and I was like, oh great, I had, it took 14 grams to do three and I've got 14 grams left, so I should be perfect to finish three more hexi puffs. 
not quite. So I, I am denied about what to do. And I was like, oh my God, that's so annoying. Uh, and I just decided I'm just going to do a tiny little bit of a different green on the bottom there. And hopefully when they're like stacked together in their granny formation, it's going to be butted right up against another one. So like from a distance, you can't see that at all. Um, maybe if it's incredibly close up, you might get a peek of that other green. But I decided I'm not going to worry about it. So that is another 14 grams down. So that is hardly, that's not even half, but still it all adds up. <laughs> what else? Oh yes, I've cast on for my Strictly socks, these DK vanilla socks by the Crazy Sock Lady. This is the yarn. This was a hand dye and it was a present. I was going to say it was gifted to me, but that makes it sound like it was a PR gift and it wasn't. It was a present from a friend. And I'm really loving the way it's knitting up. I think it's perfect. I hadn't even thought about this for October, for spooky season. It's got that sort of pumpkin-y, Halloween-y vibe. So excellent choice for a pair of Strictly socks. I have, I'm doing them two at a time magic loop in the round, mostly because I want to use up as much yarn as possible and so depending on how much I have left will depend on what size I make or how long I make them if you like will depend on who gets them as a present you know <laughs> I thought two at a time is the best however I hate setting up two at a time in the round like this I don't know why I just can never get it to work and I think in one of them I've got a twist it's not very noticeable I did German twisted cast on. I think that's what's recommended in the in the pattern. And I think, yeah, I think it's that one. There's a little bit of a twist, but you really can't tell because I think in a way, actually, I find that when I cast on at the at the loop of the magic loop, I often get a really big gap. So actually that twist in the first round actually helped to tighten it up a little bit. So I don't think it's really going to make a difference at the end of the day. I mean, I can't even see where it is. Admittedly, I don't have my glasses on maybe there, maybe that's where it was. Do you know what I mean? If I'm struggling to spot where it is, I think in the finished sock, it, it will just disappear. So um, I'm really enjoying this. It's lovely uh, merino nylon blend, this. I've left the like tag thing somewhere. But it's just nice to knit with a, a hand dyed sort of fancy yarn after a little while of knitting with, like I say, uninspiring yarn. Also cotton. I really hate the feel of this, particularly if you've got long fingernails like I have, like, oh, that feels very nails down a chalkboard to me. So I don't mind it when it's sort of crocheted up, but it's, it's um, not my favourite texture in the world. What else do I need to tell you before we do the weighing up? Oh yes, the daisies. So this, this shoe box is where I'm keeping all the bits for the daisy blouse. So... I, I'm not sure how many I've managed to make this month because the first of uh, the first few I made I just chucked in this box and then I thought oh I need to keep track of the 60 rather than counting all the time so I've been putting them in this little bag but now I actually need to count them up again I'll be back so having just added them up I was just gonna say quickly but it really was not quick it took forever I have 363 daisies and I need 371 so I need eight more daisies and then I'm there which oh that's incredible okay so I wanted to do like a little bit of filming uh of how to make a daisy so I better do that before I finish this because otherwise I'm just going to be wasting yarn that I might need for crocheting them together but we're so close we're so close I genuinely might finish this this month that might be ambitious I might finish the daisies this month I should hope for eight daisies it's it's like going to take an hour probably <laughs> I think I can make do that that's so exciting though oh my god I feel like this project has been like a weight around my neck for so long I've just realized I've not put the blue bits back in here so yes eight daisies to go and we've got six days left in October so that like two less less than two daisies a day I can do that I can manage that but for now I think we should update the stash so got me scales so the echinacea I started with 100 grams this is not echinacea the pattern was echinacea so the fiber co law I started with 100 grams and the echinacea hat used 67 grams hmm, okay one and a quarter i think yeah one and a quarter so we started at 136 for october so take 1.25 is 
Now we did some hexi puffs and that was 14 grams. So, so that's about a quarter. So let's just say minus 0.25 and that would take us down to 134.5. And then how much of this have I got left? 40 grams. So the baby hat took 60 grams. Bear hugs baby beanie to give it its proper name. So that's one and a fifth. Let's just round down and call it one. Baby bear hugs. That's not what it's called, but that's what I'm calling it. So minus one. So that's one, three, three point five. So I think that's everything I've finished in October. Yeah, because the victory berry we counted in September. Two and a half so far. And hopefully more if I, I mean, I'm not going to finish the Strictly Socks, but maybe, just maybe, I can crack on with the daisy blouse and get that done so that we can tick off. I think I said it was going to be seven. I think seven. Maybe. Fingers crossed. Hello team. A little dose of reality. Not very well. We have two days left in August. <laughs> not August, October. <laughs> oh god. And eight daisies left to make. So I thought I would make a little talk through of how you make a daisy to finish off the month. So this is my vintage daisy maker and essentially what we've got here is two layers of metal and this dial or knob on the back that when you turn it, these little metal spokes come out. And then essentially what we're going to do is wrap yarn around these spokes to create the daisy. So easiest way to think about it is like a clock face. There's 12 spokes. So I find um, pinching quite a long length for the first uh, petal, if you like, very useful. So I find holding that there and then wrapping around 12 o'clock and then six o'clock and then 12 o'clock and then six o'clock again. So we go around each spoke twice and then one o'clock and seven o'clock. So always like opposites on the clock face. And then I find pinching the yarn in the middle helps it from sliding around. So you get more even petals. And again, so I sort of pivot the daisy maker around so that the next spoke that needs wrapping is always at the 12 and 6 o'clock position. And then once all the spokes are wrapped, you cut a length. I've found that about 20 centimetres, let's go 22 centimetres, is about enough yarn to leave as a tail to sew the petals together. So then you need tapestry needle, darning needle, uh, a blunt wide-eyed needle basically. And you thread the end through there and then we're going to, s oh one of my one of my wraps has come undone. There we are that's better. So we're going to sew the petals together now. So first of all I find putting the needle and bringing the yarn under the first petal sort of helps to get some tension on it, some purchase. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to sew two petals together at a time. So the petal at one o'clock is going to get sewn to the petal at 12 o'clock. The petal at two o'clock is going to get sewn to the petal at one o'clock. And the petal at three o'clock is going to get sewn to the petal at two o'clock all the way around so that they're all sewn to each other. So that was, you're, you'll see the tail here, that one was originally the one we started with. So we're going to put the needle under all the layers of the petal. That's what in this little groove in the daisy maker makes it a bit easier. So I find doing it down here is easiest. So we're going to go under one o'clock and 12 o'clock and pull the needle through and then pull it nice and tight. And I find you want these stitches to be quite central. So I find I sometimes have to like tension them and even them out. And then I'm going to move around a petal and so two o'clock to one o'clock like that. There we go. And then again, three o'clock. And I do find it's easiest to actually keep rotating the daisy maker like that. So you're always going under one petal you've just sewn and then one that you haven't or one that you haven't sewn to the one you've just sewn. It's probably a better way of explaining that. 
Does this make any sense? <laughs> Until you get all the way around. And you can see it starts off not very central. And so you do have to sort of readjust things a little bit sometimes, I find. And quite a few of these daisies are pretty wonky. But I'm not that bothered about that. And then you see here, this is where we started. But actually, we need to do one more and make sure we've sewn this petal to that petal again just to hold everything in place nicely. So once we get back to doing the same one that we started with, which is this one with this long extra tail, we're going to tie off the thread. So I find sort of bringing it through the stitches that we've sewn to make the centre of the daisy and then looping it, pushing the needle under the petal, the stitches of a petal and then making a loop and pulling it through. I find that's good enough. And then I snip this. And there we have it. And then this is the magic moment. So we're gonna turn the dial on the back and the spokes are gonna go back in on themselves. So let's let me see if I can't. There we are, and the daisy pops off. And so the other, the this is the wrong side. The side that was facing us when we were sewing it is the wrong side. And this is the right side. And sometimes if I've left this a bit long, trim it down a bit. But I found that that um, is the quickest and most efficient way to make a daisy. Ta-da! So, seven more to go. There we go. So according to the camera, that one only really took me about two minutes to make. So not very long. Although when you've got 371 of them to make, it does add up. Okay, everyone, are you ready? This should be the last one. Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. Mm. They're not even in frame. <laughs> oh, that is, of course, if I've done all the maths right. But for now, let's assume I have. They're done. They're actually done. And now I just have to crochet them all together and sew on the rib, and possibly make some buttons. <laughs> but finally, finally, this is it. Oh, hi, welcome to the outro. I'm sorry it's a bit of a weird one this month, but um, some stuff happened and I forgot all about this bit. But I did want to show you the finished Echinacea hat. I really love the way this one sits and fits me. I think it just makes more of my features. I think it complements my hair nicely, that sort of thing. Uh, really pleased with the yarn choice. It was definitely worth ripping it out all those times to get it to work. Finished total for this month is 134. I didn't get anything else done that's counting off the tally, but I did get all those daisies done, which I'm really pleased with. So I think that's all. Okay, thanks, bye.